everyone. The video I'm going to do now is about the horn. I haven't seen a lot of information online about it in terms of the proper way to take it apart and put it back together and troubleshooting it. I did find one tutorial online that was a collage of pictures that showed you how to take it or how to put it back together and the steps for it. So I hope this video helps somebody out that's having issues with theirs and uh, gets their horns back up and running. Thanks again for stopping by. Hey everyone, we're gonna do the horn and steering wheel installation on the 54 Bel Air. So for starters, you have your steering gear shaft, I'll point to you right here, and you have this retaining spring, but more important, here this, this kind of brass-ish colored ring, that's your connector um, for the horn. So when this part that's gonna be in the horn makes contact with it and closes the circuit, that's what sets your horn off or activates your horn, whatever you wanna call it. So did a little cleanup on that and get ready to put the steering wheel on. So when you put the steering wheel on, that spring pushes back on it a little bit. So once you're lined up with the worm gear, or sorry, with the gear itself there, you gotta make sure you're all aligned and you gotta push it down a little bit. I'm trying hard to do this with one hand here, but get it aligned and then push it down. And then next will be your steering wheel retaining nut. You're gonna screw that in place. So according to the manual, this is the original 54 manual. You had two types, you have a standard and a deluxe steering wheel. Now I'll be honest, I'll have to do some research because I'm not quite sure exactly which one I have and how it's supposed to go. Oops, sorry about that. So when you put it on, you want, not the technical term of it, and forgive me for not knowing it, but this is where that contact switch is. You want that on the top of the steering wheel, not on the bottom, but on the top. So make sure you have that in position. Your next piece is this metal disc, and I'm not sure the technical term of it, but it has multiple holes in it, specifically the three larger ones. But they should also have a slight uh, concave look to it, a slight bow, bowl in it. And what you want to do is you have the three major holes for the set screws, and those want to be lined up in position for that. So you put it right behind the contact switch and just careful to line it up so that way the holes are in position. Your next piece is this plastic spacer ring with your three cutouts. And all those cutouts do is go right over top of the metal ring and right in position to where the screw holes are. And for your larger pieces, next is gonna be your horn ring. So it's a little hard for me to do it with only one hand, like I said, so I apologize. Bear with me a second. So when it's all lined up, it slides and locks into position for the old school look. With the horn ring installed, the last part is going to be taking these plastic spacers, putting them in the screws, or the screws into them rather, and then softly screwing that into the horn ring itself. And these are your, I've been just found out, these are your adjustment screws. So what you do is you don't snug them down like everybody wants to do. You want it to have a little bit of wiggle room so that when you push on the ring, it activates the horn. So now with your adjustment screws in place, your last part is to take the center cap and pop that in place. I'm gonna leave mine off. It's unfortunately a little bit later out and I have a young kid next door that I do not wanna wake up at this hour since so it's a little bit later in the afternoon. So tomorrow we'll plug the uh, battery back up and give it a test and see where we're at. And uh, fingers crossed it works. The screws went on hand tight, just so that way they get a, start to get a little bit snug and then hold off. Put the cables on the battery, horn, one horn works. The other one unfortunately is shot and have to order a replacement or find a replacement rather, trying to stay vintage, so we'll see. 
So I hope this helps uh, y'all out there who are having issues with it. As it would turn out, the horn wasn't broken. It needed to be cleaned. Talking with a few people online, little side tabs there, pop those off. And all it needed was a simple ground. The ground connection, because the radiator body itself is aluminum, the ground didn't work right. So quick fashion the ground to the frame. And I think the results speak for themselves. So thanks for checking out this episode of The Build. If you like the video, hit the subscribe button and please give it a thumbs up. I'm looking forward to sharing my next step in building this car. Be sure to follow The Build also on Instagram as well. Thanks again.